Hey, plug your ears if you don't want a spoiler alert, but the Angels are really good at playing spoilers, especially against the, the Mariners. Uh, plus, it's Mailbag Monday, and you asked this question. Should Louis Renjifo be a starter or a utility player or a trade piece? And Johnny gave some advice on how to meet Mark Gubiza to one of our Locked On Angel listeners, and we're going to tell you a little story about what happened. You're Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And John and I thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. You can give us a rate and a review, as some of you have recently. Thank you for that. They gave us five stars, Johnny, and that was so appreciated. You can do this on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe, click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. Oh, boy. <laughs> You, Johnny, 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 are you going to start the show? Are we going to? Oh, are we not? Yeah. Sorry. Hey. Let me uh, let me get the show started. Okay, uh, come on, let's we go. Appreciate you joining us for this edition of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every single day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, aka the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that is my sarcastic, laughing brother John. Sorry, I was just <laughs> laughing and poking fun and thinking about. How badly the Mariners have performed against us this weekend. Hmm, and uh, how about that? You know, pride comes before the fall, my friend. And when you're arrogant <laughs> all season long, you uh, pay your comeuppance. And that's what's happened. We've won the season series no matter what happens today. Hold course, on. I'm looking up comeuppance. Start. Hold on. You're looking up comeuppance. Is that what you said? Did you say comeuppance? <laughs> or did you? <laughs> Mike, it just, it, it, it is just so satisfying to know that we played this season, we've played it hurt. We yep. fired our manager. We yep. went through a 14 losing streak. And yep. all of that has added up to this moment because while the Mariners have had a great season and made the right moves in the offseason to help them get to this point, I, as a baseball fan, would love, would have loved to see the Mariners get to the playoffs. Sure. And sure. I know that there's still a chance. Baltimore has to do some heavy lifting on their end. Come on, but Orioles. the fact... The fact that we are in the process of sweeping them and we have one more game today, yeah, it's just oh, it's so satisfying. It's like it's like a so medium good. rare steak with like a buttery sauce on top, and <laughs> oh goodness gracious, cooked so over good. a dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is satisfying. This is satisfying. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, yeah, I'm ruining my metaphor. Stay out of it. Okay, listen, sorry. listen. The the arrogance. And the victimhood that the Mariners have played all season long, it all started with the game in Seattle where Michael Lorenzen, the ball slipped out of his hand. He threw it Justin Upton, who's not even on the team anymore, by the way. Right. And then they got into the big brouhaha in Anaheim. And oh, oh, oh Mike Trout, he doesn't fight for his guys. And oh, Jesse Winker, <laughs> Mr. Pizza Man, order that man a pizza. You know what I've seen all weekend on Twitter is how much Mariners hate jesse winker and uh hmm. oh how the turntables right how about that <laughs> we got oh, a lot of hmm. we got a lot of game to cover <laughs> you know what you can you can talk about our organization but don't say there's no fans of angels and and fans in anaheim we got john Heyman talking about oc doesn't exist or something like that and we got fans who think that there's not fans of this team when there have been fans for a very long time and they're still here and so they don't just bandwagon when their team's doing really well uh but we've got a lot of games to cover here so let's get into it my rant is over i just felt like it needed to be said and and uh your arrogance is appreciated mariners because now you're four games out of a spot hopefully three games after today and hopefully baltimore can can do some uh, heavy lifting on their end so mike oh heck talk yeah, about i believe in karma but i do believe in karma and baseball <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me talk about Friday, Johnny. 8-7 victory for the Angels. Mm -hmm. Renjifo, two home runs, three for five. Stud. Mike Trout, who is uh, supposed to retire, has 36 home runs now <laughs> on the season. And then Michael Lorenzen, he was the guy I was watching this weekend. and mm -hmm. He went five innings and gave up three runs, ended up getting the victory. A couple yes. of notes from Friday. Matt Birch tweeted this out. Uh, Renjifo is the first Angels player 
to homer from both sides of the plate in the same game since Kendrys Morales. I watched in July that game, of 2012. Do you remember that game? I remember yeah, that game. And it was a slugfest, man. It was insane. Back when they had Globe Life Park, that field was MLB slugfest, and they that both teams were hitting home runs all night long. And yeah, Kendrys Kendrys came up in the same, I believe, the same uh, inning. They batted one through nine. Oh, wow. I think you're and, right. I remember uh, I that. Could be, I could be wrong, but at the very least, he hit a grand slam in one of those home runs. Yeah, yeah. Let's just say it was the same inning because that's fun. Yeah, and that's then David Fletcher did go to the injured list. We had talked about that on Friday's show. Like, why isn't he on the injured list yet? They did send him there. He's got a deep bone bruise, can't swing the bat. So they brought up Levon Soto. We'll talk I about know. him from Sunday's game. And then they transferred Andrew Velasquez to the 60-day yeah. IL. So obviously we knew he was going to be out for the year because of his knee. And then that brings us to Saturday's game, Johnny. And that was a two-to-one Angel victory talk about our boy Shohei Otani yes it was and before I get to that I want to talk about Matt Birch who is the PR guy for the Angels and the incredible work he's doing on Twitter no matter what the naysayers say uh, I call it the church of Birch because he's taking people to church (laughs) he's dropping truth bombs about the Angels and the stats that they have so he is just uh he's killing it on Twitter so shout out to Matt Birch give him a follow at Matt Birch 12 uh, Saturday was, of course, Otani Day on the bump. Seven innings pitched, three hits, zero runs, one walk, eight Ks, 19 earned runs in his last 16 starts, Michael. That's unbelievable. Another, wow. another gem of an outing for Shohei Otani, another scoreless outing for Shohei Otani. He actually lowered his ERA to match that graphic that came up on MLB Network where it was uh, five pitchers and Otani wasn't included. Well, now he's got a lower ERA, yep. and uh, I think it's Manoa, I believe, if I'm, wow. if I'm not mistaken. So let me give you his stats here. Uh, 148 innings as a pitcher, of course, 2.43 ERA, 2.44 FIP, and a 33.1 strikeout percentage, wow. five war as a pitcher. Five Dang. war. Get this stat. Otani became the second Angels pitcher since 2009 to have a five uh, fan graphs war season. He's joined Jared Weaver ding, ding. from 2010 <laughs> and 11. And Dan Heron did it in 2011 as well. So how about yeah. that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Five F war, a fan graphs war for Shohei Otani stud carrying the team and got us the win on Saturday. Talk about Sunday and uh, Levon Soto's big day. And of course his fellow countrymen from Venezuela, uh, Luis Renjifo. Yeah, Renjifo again had two home runs. This guy was incredible all weekend long. And then Soto gets called up. This is his first game. We're kind of excited about him, right? There's not too much conversation, but we're like, hey, let's see what he can do. Defensive he gets a wizard. Hit, right? Yeah. He gets a hit. He plays great defense. But then the, the key of the game was his go-ahead home run that put the mm-hmm. Angels up 5-1. to one. And this game was just so sweet, John, because... We won the series no matter what happens today. Now, it'd be great to win today, but this was the game we needed to get so that we could actually flex a little bit, right? And this just shows that this Angel team, when they are actually in their rhythm and they're playing well, they're a tough team to beat. This is the team we expected all year long, right? Right. This is the team we expected them to be. And my boy Reed Detmers gets the win. Six innings, one run, three Ks. He pitched to a lot of contact, which I really, really was thought was, was great on his part instead of trying to strike out everybody. He did have 103 pitches by the time he was pulled. But the Angels got the victory, John, and... Got to see Soto play really, really well. And Ren Hifo is just a beef. Ren, Ren Bifo, man, that guy right. has looked so great all weekend long. And, and we're going to talk about him later on in the show. But I think he's really making it tough to make decisions next season on if you let him play or if you go and get somebody and have him be a utility guy. But that's a spoiler alert. We're going to talk about that. But so, so, so much fun to watch the game on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's great. Ren Hifo had his first career multi-home run game on Friday did it again in the same series on Sunday. And the best part was that Levon Soto was on base when he hit that second home run. So yeah. uh, they scored, they had a great, they had a great meeting at the, at home plate when he came around. So just uh Viva Venezuela and uh, go Renjifo and Suarez is on the bump today. Uh-huh. He's taking on Logan Gilbert, Logan Gilbert. I got to say is a stud. And yes. there was It'll a, there was a side-by-side comparison 
of his delivery and Weaver's delivery. And, and Logan Gilbert is very similar because he's tall, he's slender, he hides the ball well, but he's got a strong push off of his plant leg or his, uh, his push leg yep. and he gets velocity. So he's like Weaver with velocity. So that's the only nice thing I'll say about the Mariners. I don't have a problem with the players. I just right. have a problem with the fans who got too, uh, too arrogant, but you know, the big A does not stand for arrogance, Michael. It stands for Anaheim angels. And so Uh-oh. we're excited about how this series has played out again. I'm going to keep repeating it. We won the season series and we did it uh, with, with a hurt team, a struggling team, all that stuff, a, a very different look than the last time the Mariners were in town and we were throwing the ball jungle ball all over the place. So, the Angels are not canceled. The Angels are here to stay. And you just wait. 2023. I know we had a I know we were down on our luck. I know that we had a bad season. I know we had some injuries. All the stuff you guys know that we've talked about all season long. But you know what? Halo fans are here to stay. They're here listening to us on Lockdown Angels. And we appreciate that. And uh, again, we don't bandwagon. We stick by our team no matter what happens. Coming up on Locked On Angels, John gave some great advice to a Locked On Angel listener on how to meet Mark Gubiza, and so we're going to talk about what happened. But first, Locked On Angels is brought to you by Bet Online. It's your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. You can find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts at Bet Online. They are also your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. They're the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and even golf. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. Bet online, where the game starts. Not a good day for Seattle sports. Uh, I believe our 49ers, I promise I wouldn't bring it up too much. I believe our 49ers took the W against the Seahawks even after yep. their quarterback went down and our yep. our backup quarterback who was our star quarterback came in and anyway that's uh, <laughs> that's for another uh go to locked on uh locked on 49ers they do a great yes. job over there <laughs> Well, we want to thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day, Mike. We have some voicemails. We put out the question on Friday, what would you do in the offseason? What are some things that you would get done uh, for this team and heading into 2023? So let's go to our first voicemail about that subject. Guys, it's Steve from Kansas. So your question was, what should the Angels do in the offseason? And it kind of goes hand in hand with your what if segment, which you had a few days before. Uh, what if, what if is the same thing I want them to do this year, and that's trade Joe Adele. They should have traded Joe Adele this past off season. The season would have gone totally different, and they should trade him again this season. Obviously, his value's gone down, but if they paired him with a prospect, uh, get us some good pitching, please. All right. That's what I think. Steve from Kansas, it's always great to hear from you, my friend. Thanks for giving us a a voicemail message there about Joe Adele and possibly trading him in the offseason. Mike, he said he wanted to see him traded last season, and then he would want to see him get moved in this offseason. What are your thoughts about that? I think that Mickey Moniak makes this a reality because I Mm. think Mickey's really pushing to perhaps be a starting outfielder maybe next season. And I think mm-hmm. that because of the way that Moniak has played, not just offensively, but defensively, mm-hmm. I think that that's a big reason why uh, Joe Adele could be traded. Did you see Joe on Sunday? He actually caused Reed Detmers to have like eight more pitches thrown mm-hmm. because he made a mistake in the outfield. And Jeez. that just happens too much. It just happens way too much. And if he can't correct that, and I know he's young and we've talked all about that, but Moniak doesn't make those mistakes. And Moniak mm-hmm. is actually really solid at the plate since he's arrived. Now I know it's a a small sample size, but I don't think that this is actually a really bad idea. I think Steve's got a a great suggestion here and we could probably get some good value for Joe and maybe tie somebody to Joe and not have to go out and get a big contract, but actually bring in a really great player. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, it was exciting before the season began because all signs were pointing to Joe Adele, Brandon Marsh and Mike Trout. In yep. the outfield. And then the, yep. the game plan totally changed with Taylor Ward. They actually carried all four of them at the beginning of the season. And then Joe Dell ended up going back to, to AAA. And he crushed it down there, which he always does. But there's something about, and, and you and I have said many times, it's the mental game for him. 
And when he doesn't react, when he just lets baseball instincts take over and he doesn't think about the play that he's trying to make, that's the Joe Adele that is a, a strong uh, outfielder. And we didn't see that obviously on, on Sunday. So that was a shame. Right. And, and those things have to be corrected. So, yeah, I mean, I'm excited about the pitching that we do have, but if there's an opportunity to get more now that the, uh, the Joe and flow show is over, <laughs> is over. That didn't work. Sorry. I tried that. Yeah. I, that was good. Turn it off. I, I apologize. That was a good uh, attempt. Now that it's over, uh, that I would not feel so bad if, if he got moved, but I know uh, Anthony from Hawaii would not be very happy about that. He's Joe no. Bell's biggest fan. So, <laughs> Anthony, we apologize if that happens. But fortunately, he's still here, still on the team. And yeah. uh, we still think that, uh, uh, you know, he's got something to contribute. Hopefully he can fix that in the offseason. Uh, we got another question here from Eggy Nicky, who said, with Fletcher being a good defensive second baseman and the shift being banned next year, should that be option A with a quality shortstop besides uh, next to Fletcher so that they can make them a winning team. Johnny, what do you think about Fletch playing second and then bringing in a quality, strong shortstop to play alongside of him? Here's my, here's my conundrum. I love Fletch at second base. I love him at shortstop. He does great at both. Last year, we had a hitting shortstop in Jose Iglesias, but he cost us many, many defensive runs, and he was not a great defender. Now, he had a good bat. It was decent and better than Andrew Velasquez has, which leads me to the second point. We've had the opposite problem this season. Andrew Velasquez has floated at the 200 average mark and below all season yep. long, but he's yep. a great glove out there. So you're going to need somebody who can do both and do both really well, and that's going to be a superstar. That's going to be somebody like we've talked about many times, Trey Turner, Dansby Swanson, somebody who can hit and field really well, especially with a shift uh, being banned and you're not able to load up the left side on the shortstop side and you have to have two players on each side of second base, that's going to be quite an interesting thing. So I'm happy that we do have Fletch. Uh, it will be interesting to see how Fletcher and Renjifo work together and and what the Angels might do in the offseason. We'll get to we'll get to Renjifo in just a bit and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But I, I think you're going to have to go and get somebody who can do both well. If, if there was ever a time for the Angels to sign a superstar position player, now's the time, especially with who's coming on the market, who you could get, that sort of thing. So I think the Angels really have to invest at the shortstop spot or the second base spot and move, you know, perhaps Fletcher over to short full time. Well, I appreciate your uh, reasonable, logical explanation there, John, but uh -huh. I'm going to have to read this next question because I'm going to agree <laughs> with this next listener. Ruben Rosa says, okay, okay, hear me out. At the top of the lineup, <laughs> consisting of Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, and Aaron Judge. Ruben, I think that is marvelous, my friend. Give, I give think him it's all marvelous. the MVP, a, a triple I MVP for the game. Everybody on my team, <laughs> because listen, let's have let's have Velasquez play short, and we can hide his bat in between Shohei Trout and right. Otani and Rendon, and let's just let's just give all the money away. All right, let's bring Aaron Judge over. Did you know? that the Yankees weren't even going to offer him like a $21 million a yeah, year contract. Like I that, know. the fact that they're now in this position is laughable because he's probably going to ask for 30 plus million, but Ruben, I love this dream. I'm going to buy into this dream and say, man, wouldn't that be awesome if it was Trout, Otani, Judge, Rendon. Oh my goodness. That's a team I would really love and really love to watch and enjoy watching. Here's my thing about that. And I know uh, like that, that would be awesome, but here's my thing about that. Aaron Judge is going to be the free agent to watch this offseason, which means the guys that we would potentially target, like I mentioned, it's short, will be a little bit under the radar That's true. Uh, coming into the offseason. They're not going to be yeah. the, the the highlighted free agent that comes in, uh, that gets you know all the attention, uh, and that's going to be Aaron Judge this season, in this offseason. So, yeah, <laughs> could you imagine those three at the top of the lineup? Good grief, man. That would be... A beautiful thing to watch. I would love now to Now, listen, I, I hate to be a bummer, but you know what would happen? One of them would get hurt. Somebody would slump. <laughs> like the, <laughs> Our the angel cursed. luck would run out if that would happen on us, right? <laughs> hey, we've got more questions here from more Locked On Angels listeners. This one comes from a longtime listener. In fact, 
He's like our number one fan all the way back to the Super Halo Bros podcast yeah. before we came to Locked on Angels. And that's Maddie Nonsense on Instagram. He said, I know I'm going to sound like an eternal optimist, but I'm looking forward to next year, the future of the franchise as a whole, new ownership on the horizon, and the kids coming up to pitch. Heck I yeah. can't be the only one, can I? Maddie, no. you are not the only one. There is a lot to be excited about with this organization. I know the sale is kind of looming. It, we, we're not sure how long it's going to take. Uh, optimistically, we would love to see it happen before the start of next season, but that might not be a realistic timeline considering there's other teams that are up for sale. Mike, is, is, is Maddie being ridiculous or does he have reason for his optimism? He is like Melissa Etheridge. He is not the only one. And so, did you like that? Thank you. I quit. And I think <laughs> that his optimism is shared. I love it. I think that this is something that we can look forward to, especially with what we've seen each of the pitchers do this weekend. And over the last few weeks, they're really mm -hmm. starting to figure it out. And I want them to carry this momentum into next year. Again, I'm a big believer in how you end things will be how you begin things. And so I would love for these pitchers to continue to carry that momentum. I know that we always talk about get pitching, get pitching, get pitching. But I think that Maddie's right. I think that the young guys are the key to the future here. And the young guys are the key to us getting some big free agents that we don't have to pay all of these young guys. We can actually give contracts to these big free agents and still have Detmers and still have – uh, Suarez and still have some of those young guys on the team that are not costing us so much. And I think that they're going to be attractive pieces too, if maybe we need to trade them away to actually get better pieces for our team. So Maddie, I share your optimism and I'm excited. And it, it's about that time for angel fans to get optimistic yeah. for the next season. This is really yeah. what happens around September ish is when we go, Oh, you know, next season actually looks really good. It's, it's just funny. I mean, pitching was such a huge problem last season Yep. And it's it's been solved. And, and <laughs> the funny part is that the people who are really struggling out of the bullpen are the guys who've been around forever. Ryan Tapera, Aaron yeah. Loop. And and even I know he's going to start against Texas on, on Tuesday, but Mike Myers also been around right. with us since 2019, 2020. He struggled, too. So it's it's like this youth movement is solving the pitching problem. And I love to see that, of course, Otani doing the things that he's doing on the mound, which are Amazing. unreal. He made that incredible catch with that comebacker. So who says he doesn't play defense? Because that was that an was incredible catch. Yeah. <laughs> so get right. out of here. Uh, how about Jaden or underscore Ortiz 15 on Instagram? He said, Luis Renjifo, 2023. Starter, utility, or trade piece? Mike, what do you think? I am really wishy-washy with Renjifo. Today, I'm going to say... <laughs> Yeah, he should be a starter. Yeah, because he is, he is, he's proved himself at the end of this season. Now I know that these games, quote unquote, don't mean anything, but he has proven to really play hard, and he's playing against really good teams, and he is coming through. <laughs> he and hit a home run off the last year's Cy Young Award winner right, on Friday. Right, like, and this so this is not I, a fluke. I think that it actually would be a wise move to give him a shot at shortstop or second base and flip Fletch and him, depending on who is better defensively, hmm. because I think you can say it's a money saving decision, right? Because you know, you're gonna have to pay Shohei and then perhaps you can go and get a great outfielder or you can get another great pitcher or something along those lines, hmm. because I think Renjifo has proven that this, I don't think this is a fluke. I think this is who he is. He just needs the at-bats. And there's some guys that just need the at-bats to show you who they are. Like with Joe Adele, he's had the at-bats and we're finding out that maybe the major league level is not somewhere where he can function really well like he does in the minor leagues. He might mm. need some more time, right, to cook and to sizzle. But Renjifo has proven this year that he is, is here to stay and he's proven that he's a really good hitter and really good defensively as well. It reminds me of Jared Walsh in 2020, where we our yeah. eyes were open to what he was capable of doing. And that was a much shorter sample size than what Luis Renjifo has been doing. So yeah. in a way, if we're going to go to bat for Jared Walsh and say, ah, he should be starting over Pujols every day in 2021, then it would be unfair to not give Luis Renjifo the same opportunity next season. I still think, I still think you go out and you get somebody who can play one or both of those positions, shortstop, hmm. second base. And I think if, you know, you play the hot bat, you let Renjifo start, you let Fletcher start. And of course you're going to need depth because Anthony Rendon is always a question mark. And so you have Renjifo to step in for him 
or you have Fletcher to step in for him or whoever the other guy might be moved to third or something like that. You just, you got to have depth. And uh, there was a great, oh, it was from around the diamond. They were talking about how much depth the Dodgers have had this season where yeah. one guy goes down and somebody steps up and that's what the angels need. And it's not enough to be like, oh, this is the guy we're going with. No, you need a guy behind him and behind him in order to take those spots so that these guys, uh, when they get hurt, you can be confident in who's coming up to replace them. So if, if somebody were to go down in the infield, I'd be more than confident if we had Luis Renjifo or Fletcher stepping in for them on a full-time basis. But yeah, I mean, gosh, I, I still think Renjifo gets the chance to start. I still think we get that superstar, shortstop or second baseman, whatever it might be, and go from there. Hey, Mike, we got a uh, a voicemail from somebody behind enemy lines. They're originally from Southern California, <laughs> but now they are in Seattle. So our hearts go out to you. This is uh, Ian from Seattle. Hey guys, my name is Ian. I'm from Seattle, um, but originally from Southern California. And when I started going to Angel Games when I was a kid, they were known as the California Angels. And I just really hold that logo and that team very close to my heart. And I'm, I don't know why they changed. And they've had so many different logos, different team names. And I'm just wondering, was that just due to, like, ownership changes? Or was it due to, like, I don't know, like a lack of identity? And then um, my second part of this question is, do you guys have a favorite logo or team name from the past? And, yeah, that's it. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for all the work you do. And, yeah, thanks, guys. Ian, we appreciate you, my friend. Uh, as far as favorite logos, you're looking at it. This is this is my favorite one, the old 80s logo. I love this one, Mike. You got a favorite logo? I love the state of California logo that you, they used to have on on their jersey and on their arm. Yeah. And I love I have the old classic jacket with the state of California logo. I love the California Angels. The Me reason too. why they changed it is because of being able to market them as a Los Angeles market team. Like when the Rams were in Anaheim, they were able to market them as the Los Angeles Rams. And so Artie just did that really mainly for advertising and for money. You know, I would encourage you, Ian, if you're watching, uh, to go back and check out our episode where we talked about Gene Autry and how much he fought to have the Angels be the California Angels. Yeah. And uh, and uh, he that was something he really cared about. Uh, he did not want to give up the Los Angeles Angels name when they first originally started. And so he ended up doing California Angels. Now, when Disney took over, I could understand why Disney wanted to do Anaheim Angels because sure. they wanted to make in the same way that Orlando is a destination spot for Disney world and all the things that are happening in Orlando, they wanted to do the same thing for Anaheim because you have Disneyland there. So Anaheim was really important to them. Uh, eventually the ducks became just Anaheim ducks. Right. And, and so they, they, they were the mighty ducks of Anaheim for a while and now they're Anaheim ducks. Uh, but here's what I've noticed. And this is why it makes sense for me that already did the whole Los Angeles angels thing because every article about the potential sale of the team has been when you're one of two teams in the Los Angeles market, you yeah. really have to consider how much it's going to cost. Like every article is saying when you're one of two teams in the Los Angeles market, yeah. that's because Artie called them the Los Angeles angels. We all Makes know more attractive. We're, we're all fans here. We all know, we all understand they are the Anaheim angels. They're in Anaheim. They're not in Los Angeles. They're, down the five freeway uh, from from Los Angeles. But well, I mean, here's the thing. You and I are Niner fans and they're not in yeah. San Francisco. They're in Santa right. Clara, you know, yeah. so <laughs> but they're still the San Francisco 49ers, right? Correct. And so same thing with the Angels. Like that's why this name matters for ownership because it does produce an opportunity to make more money and it does mm -hmm. look more attractive and it helps the team to be more profitable because they are in quote unquote Los Angeles. Yeah. And, and the truth is, is that their, their broadcast reach reaches all of Southern California. So yes, to, yeah. to say that you're Los Angeles, I it, it was all, I mean, obviously it was a money play. It was a value play, but it's paid off because the valuation of this team is what was it? 2.3 billion or something like yeah. that now. Yeah, and, that's amazing. and, and I think it has everything to do with the marketability of this team. So, right. You know, we all talk about new ownership coming in and maybe changing the changing the name and the location name and, and maybe going back to Anaheim or California if they were able to do it. I know there's like weird rules about state names now. Uh, it's kind of grandfathered in now. But all that to say, 
that's those are the changes. But again, check out that Gene Autry episode. We'll actually put that. Um, I'm going to point up to the corner here on YouTube. Uh, I'll, I'll tag that there. Mike, nice. last thing was uh, we had a YouTuber or YouTube yep. watcher, Ryan James, comment and say that he really wanted to meet Mark Gubaza. How could he go about doing that? So I replied in the comments. I said, hey, the best thing you can do is tweet at him. Tell him that you really want to meet him. Get a picture with him. If you have some stuff to autograph, he's super cool about doing that. And so that's what Ryan did. And so I said, if you get that photo with him, send it to us. So Ryan, here you go, my friend. We're going to lean oh. out here. Look at that. Come on. Ryan James and Mark Gubaza getting a picture together. They made it happen. Super cool. Mark Gubaza is the coolest guy. I actually tweeted at him this weekend. And he's going to, he wants to be a guest on Locked on Angels. Oh, heck yeah. The off season is over. So uh, that would be great to see. We'll try not to fangirl. Uh, and actually give you a professional, interesting interview. I can't make any promises. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Now make your second listen, the Locked On MLB podcast show with Paul Francis Sel Sullivan. He brings humor, passion, and a unique perspective on every team and shares some of the biggest stories from around the league, like how the Angels won three games against the Mariners this weekend and will win game four today. You can follow the number one daily league wide podcast locked on MLB on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, don't forget to give us a follow at locked on angels on Twitter. And of course at super halo bros on Twitter and Instagram. Today's game is, is an early one. So be sure you tune in for that. Is it a one Oh seven start time? Yeah, or one yeah, it's, yep. an, it's another early game. It's a getaway game as the Angels head to Texas. But uh, Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Well, we're going to do the world a favor. We're going to settle the debate. We're going to mm -hmm. tell you who the American League MVP is, and we're going to do it with all of our unbiased opinions tomorrow on Locked on Angels. I'm not going to do it unbiased. I'm doing my my West Coast bias. I'm bringing <laughs> all that into the conversation. And I'm going to pretend that New York doesn't exist like John Heyman <laughs> does. He Apparently, California doesn't exist to John Heyman. So yeah. uh, he, that guy's just going off, man. So and, all right, until, until tomorrow, everybody, we appreciate you joining us. And uh, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow for more Locked on Angels.